Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Red Couch Podcast. I'm Alex Allen, as your host. Alongside me is Constantinos. And here in this episode, we're going to dive into PC gaming versus console gaming. And there's a little bit of a debate that goes on between that of which direction you should take with it. So we have two special guests for this episode. We have Cameron Ayers at the end there of the couch. And in the middle of the couch, we have Adam Boyce and their gamer tags as well. They go by Airzy and Boyce. Yeah. Uh, you know, Very I, original. <laughs> it's cooler than mine growing up. Mine was Jump Your Pompano, and that was the one that Xbox gave me when I first signed up for Xbox Live. So, Is that, that the, like the, the generated one? Yeah, that the they generated one they gave you when you first signed up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's stuck with me ever since then. So, You know, I thought I was pretty hot with mine. It was Soccer 10 Boy, but like, not the normal B O Y. It was B O I. Ah, uh, he's the original boy. Suck it, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, let's crack right into PC gaming versus console gaming. Erzy, I'll start with you on this because you actually started off as an Xbox console player. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people were though. Like growing up you were either playstation 3 or xbox 360 or even going back further you're either like the original xbox like the og og xbox or the ps2 so i mean you you grow up around that and you're like oh my gosh this is the greatest thing and then you see people playing csgo and like you know like very like early rocket league and all those like games like league of legends too and you're like i want to play those too those seem fun but oh wait a minute they're like pc exclusive so you can't play them and I think even just looking at like PCs in general, like even PCs back in 2015, I think their specs were obviously just way higher tier than PS3s and, you know, Xbox 360s and then later going into PS4s and Xbox Ones, right? And it's like, oh my gosh, like I want this. Like these games run so well. But then it's like, I think even recently when the uh, Series X and the PS5 came out, I think that they got a lot like more closer because it's like now these consoles are using processors like cpu processors and they're running mm. on ssds now and everything looks so well and runs so nice um but i mean i think pcs in general just run a lot better and i think pcs now have more exclusivity on them because of the customization and the games you have uh, but i mean that's just me i mean adam i don't know how you feel about it but i mean yeah with like the new gen stuff it's literally just they're taking pretty much the same parts out of a pc and just throwing it in a console it's made by the same manufacturers now it's a lot closer like the main difference is always be they couldn't run like above 60 hertz so there was no point in if you even if you had a console that could physically do better it was capped and just locked and couldn't do anything higher than that and now they're kind of closer not really still a third of what pcs can do but they're getting yeah. there so it, i think start i think realistically too it's like a lot of I, do, I know xbox does this i don't know if ps5 does it but xbox now allows like mnk support for their games so that, yep. that kind of draws it a bit closer. It's like, I want to play mouse and keyboard, but like I, I obviously don't have a PC to play it on. And I kind of want to play like COD or Apex or all those games that have MNK support on console. I want to play those games on mouse and keyboard because, you know, it's a lot easier to play. In a way, it's a lot easier to play some of those games that don't have a lot of aim assist than to use a controller. Um, but I mean, I think that's where the bridge was kind of drawn to is like just having that capability. And then the fact that for two tenths of the price of a pc you can own a pc quote unquote yeah i mean for example yeah even with playstation and xbox both of them yeah you can connect a mouse and keyboard but you won't have the same sort of eligibility with a pc a pc like they're dedicated with their keyboard and mouse all the time and maybe some games will actually accept on the PlayStation or the Xbox that you can add a keyboard or mess to it, but there's a lot of limitations. But the one part where I'm curious though, Adam, where did you start growing up? Were you a console player first or did you start where PC was? Depends how young we go. Cause like when I was, obviously when I was really young, like I, I was on console, I, I was like the first time I played anything PC was like in 2015, but it was on like some tiny little laptop wasn't i didn't get a real pc till like 2018 or 2019 i can't remember when i got it or when i started building it was 2019 i think okay. um yeah that was like until then i was still kind of a console kid like i never like hard grinded games on console i never really grinded anything till pc but like 
I grew up playing like Battlefield 3 on the PS3. That was my game. I probably have more hours on that yeah. than anything still, just because I was like 11, 12 years old, just every day doing that. Dude, Battlefield 3. That that game was actually high tier. <laughs> it's still one of my favorite games of all time. Compared to like COD though at that time, it's like, wow, this actually feels like I'm there because it just looks so nice compared to what was out. What was out? What, what when did Battlefield Three come out? Like 2012. I think it was 2012. So 2012 that's Bo2 and yeah. Ghost. It would have been Ghost. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So you go from Battlefield Three to Ghost, and it's like. I don't feel like I'm playing on an arcade game anymore. This feels great. I have Moving vehicles feels so that I can drive. Yes, and all exactly. of this. There's like destructible walls and oh my god, what was the map? What was the the map that every every server had running 24/7? Oh, Operation was, Metro. Yes, yeah, Operation Metro. Metro. No, actually, Metro. No, that's not even the one I'm thinking. Really? Of. There's another one. I know that one. It was like open desert. And it was the oh. it, everyone loved it for tanks oh. and planes. You know the one I'm talking about? It was a bunch yeah. of warehouses. Yeah. That yes. was my favorite. I love that. I can't remember what it was called. Oh but I remember gosh. Metro and that one. Like I Area 43 done, or something like that? Yeah. Something like that. You know the map I'm talking yes, about. Yes, I do. Know. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I believe Middle Desert. I remember yes, that. Yes, I miss, I miss those days. Oh, yeah. But see, like, those games actually ran pretty well on the console. The, there was not too many complaints or sort of any real issues that people were bringing up saying, like, oh, like it's not like actually performing well or like my frames are constantly dropping and nowadays there's it seems like there is just a lot more complaints coming down on some small niche games and i see that coming even just prime example though is with that star wars game that just came out for pc a lot of people are starting to complain about that for running on pc what do you guys sort of think like is going on with these little complications what was wrong with it well uh for me i I played the game there was a lot of issues where there was high cpu usage uh there was constant stutters and everything like that um just basic overall performance issues and um yeah that's what we really i saw playing the game but like i think maybe like that more goes to the developer side that they need to polish their games more thoroughly before they ship them to multiple platforms i mean it's already complex enough for developers to make you know uh different versions of the game games like different ports for multiple consoles and platforms like pcs and stuff and whatnot but i just think they need over they overall need to make sure that it's at a releasable state if that makes sense before they they push it out to a mass public and before they upset an entire fan base especially the star wars one cyberpunk vibes (laughs) <laughs> yes, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> and along the lines of Cyberpunk, like it is just, I think the whole thing is so, how many games release now that like don't go into like every game on Steam is in early access. Like mm-hmm. how many early access or it's an open beta and all of this, and it's like yeah. we're just gonna ship you like a half finished game. You're paying full price though, and they call it an early access, yeah. and then everyone complains about it because like why isn't this finished? Yeah. But you're willingly buying into a half finished game star wars is just them being stupid i don't know they're just sending stuff out that (laughs) isn't finished and i gotta say like from my perspective is that a lot of like these double a indie games are making a bigger and more positive impact like they're having a much better release than some of these triple a titles from big studios like respawn or even uh triarch right just to name a few of these of of, uh, these big companies but like a game that i want to touch on is like phasmophobia which is still technically in early access but look how well it's performing as of recent right like yeah and i can only go up from there too right and i think going on what adam was saying too um another game that was kind of in that same phase where it's like we're gonna just release it early and then we'll just keep adding on adding on is destiny too because they really realistically they released it early right and now they're adding on to the story through dlcs constantly constantly so i feel like the story can never really end for that game but I think the reason it worked out for Destiny 2 is that that's how they marketed it. It's like, ah, yes, this story is going to keep going on for like seven plus years now, right? But yeah. we're just going to keep adding DLC after DLC after DLC, right? Yeah. Or like even when it comes to longevity as well as a company that is here in, L- in London. It's a London-based company is, uh, um, I'm just on the tip of my tongue. It was made by Digital Extremes. Uh, Game? Yeah, it's a game. Warframe. 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 Yeah. That was made in yeah. London? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was made here. They're, they're, yeah. they're headquartered like downtown. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah it's yeah. downtown. Yeah. No way. Yeah, so my professor yeah, actually worked on that game. It's pretty cool from my, when I was in my last program. But that game itself, one thing that we talked about enough in class as well in some of my classes is how long it was able to withstand uh, its fan base and, and keep people drawn in. Like we're talking a game that came out at when the last gens launched until today. Right, it's it's crazy adding new features, keeping it fresh. That's the one challenge that a lot of dev, developer uh, development companies have to keep in mind when releasing new additions to games, and that's something difficult. And I think a lot of gamers, especially ourselves, kind of have to take into consideration as well. Right, is we want something fresh and new. Yeah, speaking fresh and new, I mean, think about it for PCs especially. Components are always trying to come in. There could be new. For example, the graphics cards, that was a huge thing that was going on. Yes. And a lot of people were trying to build their own PCs and put things together. And even throughout the lockdowns that we were having through the pandemic, more people were actually kind of doing that was building their own PCs. So boys, I'm just curious, cause you were saying that you got into building PCs. What would you recommend if someone is looking for a PC, a gaming PC, especially? I mean, just whatever you can afford, realistically. Like, there's yeah. we're so many generations deep now that it's just there's so much used stuff that's out there too. Because everyone bought all this stuff, hoping to resell it when everything was crazy expensive, and now it's not expensive anymore. And the people that paid nine hundred dollars for something, trying to resell it for sixteen hundred, are having to get rid of it for four hundred because that's all they have. Like, it, you cannot sell it for anything else, and. There, there's so many different levels that you can enter at it's just literally whatever you can afford it's really hard to go wrong unless you're getting scammed and i feel like if you're going to do it like if you're going to do your pc building or buying a pc in general you have to do it now because of how much the the, the the gpu prices have dropped and i mean when i got my pc it was february of last year i think and that's when like 3060s and 3070s were at like 1700 dollars just for them I got lucky. I got I think I got my PC pre-built for like two thousand, but it's like most of that money is in the GPU itself, and obviously a lot of that was because of crypto mining and people buying like tens and twenties of thirty sixties, forty or not even forty nineties at the time, like thirty nineties, uh, twenty eighty supers, and just putting eleven thousand dollars into a rig just to crypto mine, and that's why the like the inflation was so high was because of that. But like now that it's dropped and no one's really mining stuff anymore, I think if you're gonna do you're going to buy a PC or buy anything for building. I think you got to do it now, honestly. Yeah. Plus I feel like if you're sitting on it and you're not sure if you want to get a console or you're looking to get into the gaming PCs, I guess for me, like if I'm sitting there, for example, with like a thousand dollars, where would you guys say it's best investing your money into now? Would it be a PC? I think it's just the game that you play. Right. If you if you're, for example, if you're a Rocket League kind of player or, or um, I mean, I was going to say Rainbow Six, but Rainbow Six is really more PC oriented. Um, mm -hmm. I guess it honestly really like Rocket League. And I think you can get away with COD and Apex and a lot of those kind of shooters. I think if you're going to like lean that way, you could get away with buying a new gen console. But when you're looking at playing games like Valorant, anything PC exclusive, League of Legends, I mean, even League of Legends, you don't need a beast to run it. You could practically run it on a toaster if you wanted to. You, you wanted could. To, it, if you wanted to spec it out a little much. bit. Um, but I think realistically, like Valorant and I, even COD, if you really want to run COD at the highest level, you wouldn't need to invest in a PC. But yeah, like Adam was saying, it's just invest whatever you can into it. And then once you have it and you have the funds later on, you can just keep reinvesting in whenever things go on sale. It's like, oh, yes, maybe I'll jump on this opportunity now, too better my GPU or get a better CPU or, you know, whatever. But I think it's just yeah. game. Like what kind of game do you, are you playing? What kind of game do you want to get, you know, good at? If you want to get something into competitive, it's, it's all just game oriented. And one thing I want to kind of brush and uh, jump into as well is you guys both jump from PC or from console to PC, right? Tips wise, what can you offer to someone who is looking to do the same thing as you, as you guys did? What can you tell them uh, in terms of advice before they make such a, a big investment, right? into into a pc i mean really it's there's so many people and so many resources for you when you're trying to like learn about it and figure out where to go like there's so many different like youtubers where their whole life is literally just reviewing tech like this and like trying to help people make good decisions a lot of them are paid uh by some companies but there are some yeah. good ones um and even then there's so many just 
people in person. If you go to a store, like they will help you either build it yourself or they'll, they'll probably offer to build it for you, but it's not like they have to. Like people that want to build, there's so many ways for them to learn. And it's really simple. I say it's literally just adult Legos. It's really hard to mess it up. <laughs> if you mess it up, it's really bad. But it's also really hard to mess it up unless you just throw something at a wall. Like, <laughs> Sorry, just Cameron's cringing over there. Just the don't impulse <laughs> buy. Whatever you do, do that, not impulse a buy a PC. That said. is exactly what I did. Do I, I regret it? Too. A little I bit, yeah. Too. Well, because my PC, I was like, you know what? I think it was literally the day after we played a, um, a Nace game. Um, against Minnesota, and I was, that was my last game on console. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I'm going up against people on PCs. Um, they're doing this better. They're doing a lot of this better. Like their guns are just shooting better. It's like, oh no, I can't do this, right? Um, so literally the next day, I'm like, Canada computers. This looks good. I see a Ryzen in there. I see a I see a 3060 in there. I see 16 gigabytes of uh, DDR4 RAM. Yes, sir. Click, and I'm like, oh wait a minute. There's only one stick of RAM in there. <laughs> <laughs> you make a big, I'm big impulse. Oh wait, there's like yeah. th there's like two fans in there. There's no airflow. Yeah. I went to Memory Express to buy a hard drive and I left $1,500 lighter. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? I bought, I went to buy a hard drive for my my uh, home server and I look on the shelf because I know one of the sales managers at the, the Memory Express that's out on like Southdale mm -hmm. and I was just chatting with him. And it was like, hey man, I know you don't have anything on the shelf, but I know you keep some in the back for a build. <laughs> Do you have a 3070? He's like, I have one of the ones that are like, and they were, this was during the shortage and they were giving them for retail. Memory Express wasn't updating their stock count online, but if you went in person, they had cards on the shelf for retail price. I bought what? a 3070 for 939 during the middle of the <laughs> shortage. <laughs> And that's why I left $1,500 right Because I walked in, I'm like, I'm not going to find this for a while. And I bought that and I bought a 5800X. Infinite money I'm like, glitch. They're, they're right here. I was, gonna, I was going to resell it, but I sold my third. I had a 3060 and I'm like, eh, it's, it's a decent enough yeah. upgrade. Yeah. And I sold <laughs> my 3060 for like 650 bucks. <laughs> so I didn't do anything. Oh my God. One other question I want to ask you guys, both more opinion based is, what are what are your thoughts on pre builds versus custom builds essentially as well? I'm, uh, I mean, Adam, you can go first. For PCs, <laughs> uh, I mean, as long as you buy a pre built from like the right company, I don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, a lot of them, they'll if you're ever looking at a pre built and you'll notice they give you the brand name for some parts and they don't give you the brand name for the others. That's because the ones they don't give you the brand name for are going to be the first to die. And I, I have a buddy that just bought, hmm. um, a buddy in Quebec who just bought a PC. It was forty three hundred US, with a like a like a forty like forty eighty brand new, oh, okay. built by one of the like like TikTok PC builders. Oh, yeah. And he calls me a couple days ago, like, yeah, I'm having issues. Uh, I keep blue screening, and we're looking, uh -oh. and they charged him two hundred and fifty dollars for an SSD. Which for one, it was a two terabyte NVMe SSD is what it was advertised as. And we look at this serial number and it's like this $80 piece of crap from Amazon. <laughs> and I'm like in the, he, I, so he shows me the parts list that he got and everything is the brand name except the SSD and the motherboard. And of course they're both just cheap pieces. That's one thing. So just I, be careful for that. That's the only <laughs> thing I have to say. But see, the, that's the scary part, though, with some things that you're looking into for that. Because, I mean, if you're going to buy a console, you know what you're going to get. The, the, it's all the components in there. I mean, there could be a random default console that you might get and it explodes on you or something. Yeah. But you never know. I, I think that's why you are taking a little bit of a safer route if you want to get like a PlayStation or Xbox. You know what you're getting every time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to buy a PC, again, don't impulse buy. You're going to save a lot more money and a lot more. You're not going to stress as much. And again, I'll also, another thing I forgot to mention too, the PCU in my PC blew out mid Vanguard game because it was undervolted. I think the recommended wattage for my GPU was like 550, something like that. Or I had a 500 bronze. Oh, your PSU blew up. PSU blew oh, up. Oh. Mid, mid Vanguard ranked game. I'm playing. Oh, that is dangerous. It is very dangerous. Like, that is house fire. Yes, it dangerous. is. It is very dangerous because oh, I'm playing. Snap. I hear. Just. Boop, and I just smell smoke. I'm like, oh, yes. Do you smell the smoke? 
it's time to go to a doctor because you don't want to know what you're breathing in if you smell smoke. I smell I smelled something burning. I didn't smell this. I smelled something burning. So I'm assuming it was the smoke. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, the computer gods were on my side, though, because I took the to Canada computers like two days later. And they're like, so the only thing damaged was the PCU. Nothing else was harmed. Somehow. I don't know how. They're like, I've never really seen this happen. Something else should be like dead. But yeah, so they just they replaced it. They gave me like, I think they went overkill, like 850 gold. Oh, wow. Pretty much for free. So I'm like, well, ta I'll take it. Yeah. Right. But yeah, just don't impulse buy. I think realistically, if you're going to buy a PC, just take the time and get it custom built. Because you never know. There could be a lot of deals on for certain parts that it's like, if you get it in a in a pre-built, you know, it might be overvalued, right? Or like you're buying it for more than what you could have gotten it on the market. So I think you just take the time to actually learn and research what you want for your PC. I think going the custom route's the better way. But I mean, realistically, it's like if you're gonna get a pre-built, go ahead, but make sure you're getting what is needed for the type of game you're playing too. Yeah, one thing I would say as well too is if you're gonna get a pre-built, especially from let's say Canon computers like their Armory series, always ask if the parts are in interchangeable. Yes. Right, so that's one thing I would 100%. say too, going into it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for all the viewers out there as well, I'm curious to know if you guys right now had to make the choice on getting like a, a new gaming PC or let's say like the, the top notch Series X or PS5, what would you guys choose? You're asking a guy who builds them as a job. <laughs> I think you know what my answer is going to be. <laughs> and I think no, coming sorry. from a guy that you, you of all people also <laughs> helped reel me into the PC game, <laughs> I think you should know where I'm leaning a little towards that. So I think we're a little biased. Yeah. On the couch right now. <laughs> it, could, it could be a little biased on that side. But hey, you know what though? Like gaming PC, I mean, not gaming, consoles. Wow, that was a little biased there. <laughs> <laughs> consoles, though, there is cool new features that are coming out with it. Like PS5, they're actually coming out with that handheld device that you could actually start to like play portably, almost like a PSP. The Steam Deck. The uh, Steam Deck? Well, uh, there's a Steam that Deck too. too there's yeah. a different one? No, there's one coming for PlayStation. I have not even heard about this. They announced it last week. Yeah, they just announced it last week. I never saw it. So it's this. like a portable screen for the PS5? Yeah, you can go and like, stream your games on it and stuff. Oh, it streams from a PS5? Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, but it has like on the side that has like a basically a PS5 controller split in half. Yeah. Okay, so my first question for that real quick is, when in Rome and your PS5's in London, Ontario, how is that going to work? It will connect. It just needs Wi-Fi. 7,000 kilometers away. Yeah. I mean, it'd be the same thing. You've ever seen GeForce Now? I haven't. It's it's the same thing. Like, you, you can, like... It, it was an NVIDIA thing where they run it on, like, the NVIDIA, like, data centers, and it just streams your game. Yeah, you can feel the delay, but it plays. Uh, okay. Almost like cloud gaming, essentially? It is cloud gaming. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's exactly right what it is. On that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think we'll have to wrap it up here. Any final comments, both you guys? PC over console, coming from a console gamer. But be smart. Again, please don't impulse buy. That's all. I'm just going to leave it at that. Stay away from the impulse buys. But all right. Thank you, anyone, for tuning in for this episode on the Red Couch Podcast. We'll see you next time.